All right, YouTube, welcome back. So, Sierra, how many lower control arms have you done so far? I don't know. Professionally? I don't know. Two? two? Since you've been working here? Two yesterday, two today? Okay. You can take a guess. Have you done any control arms on your cars? No. No? Jude's cars? Uh, no. All right, so what I'm teaching Sierra on control arms, there's a way to do certain control arms so these control arms here that have a bolt-in mount at the back and then you can unbolt this in services you want to leave this mount loose while you're doing the job not loose and road test it but loose then you want to bring it over to a drive on where the vehicles in ride and then you want to torque this this nut when the vehicles in its normal ride position some control arms will limit the suspension so if you have them tightened up and the vehicle's down, when the vehicle is in ride, it's trying to put uh, rubber tension pushing the suspension up or down. So there's, there'll be resistance in the suspension. Um, that's why we like to leave them loose, this style, move them over to a drive-on, um, and then retorque them when the vehicle's in ride. Then you know that you have it in, in the right position. Um, these came pre-torqued. Of course, there's no instructions, but you, you, know, you kind of have to know this. And uh, a, a few years back, we had a Mazda Miata or something in the Mazda line. And the customer went and spent all his money on the suspension work at another shop. And it looked like a four-wheel drive Mazda Miata. Uh, and what happened is when they did the suspension work front and rear, damn it, when they did the suspension work front and rear, they did exactly what I just said. They put the control arms in or the bushings in or whatever they did. And then they twerked all everything with the wheels hanging. So then when he went to put the vehicle down on the ground, I guess they didn't realize that they did the job wrong or who knows, you know, I've seen so many things nowadays um, that the vehicle was four wheel drive. And then uh, he actually came here and we looked over all the suspension work and I'm like, what are the chances on but I don't know what these people do to their cars. That they just put everything in, torqued it with the wheels hanging, and then it's a, such a light car that it would need a, a bunch of weight to start pushing those suspension components down. But then what it's doing is it's twisting and binding the rubber in the suspension. So we went around, loosened all the control arms, everything, torqued everything in ride, uh, and the vehicle, you know, as soon as we loosened everything, the vehicle fell right into its normal ride lane. Uh, and he was completely ecstatic about that. Um, what else? I've seen shops put uh, stuff from online in, uh, these suspension kits. Um, one that comes to mind is a Mercury Grand Marquis from whatever this Detroit Axle. And, uh, and then they gave the customer back the car, and the car was it was riding a wheelie, right? The front springs were just so the wrong spring rate. And there's a certain amount of ride height in a, in a, in a sprung uh, coil spring suspension that is gonna settle over a few days or a few weeks. Uh, when the ride height's, you know, three to five inches out of where it's supposed to be, um, they're definitely in the wrong springs. Uh, so what I wound up doing to help this other shop out was, uh, I think we, just cut a leaf off the spring because they sit in the saddle. So you could just cut them down until it had the right, until, until it had the right ride height and it worked out perfectly fine. Um, I had another customer buy struts from Detroit Axle for a Subaru. Uh, we put them in, the car was riding a friggin' wheelie and all that to save $100. We called the local parts house, used their products, got it right the first time. Um, so yeah, so if you're doing lower control arms, pay attention to the design. Um, typically, uh, some of them are bonded to the control arm where you have, there's nothing you can do about that and hopefully aftermarket's bonded correctly. Um, we know OEM's gonna be bonded correctly for the most part. Um, and then aftermarket that the bushings bolt on, you loosen them up, put them on the car, set the vehicle down, or if you're doing it on a, a drive on already or laminate rack, Set the vehicle and ride, go back and twerk everything and ride. Thanks for watching.